the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. My dear ones, teachers and students, today our church is celebrating a big feast of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's the Meet Pentecost, exactly 25 days from the resurrection and 25 more to the Pentecost. So it's a big feast between two or three big feasts because 15 days later, later, we have the ascension of the Lord. So this one separates this divine feast between the resurrection, ascension, and Pentecost. And it's exactly in the middle of this beautiful period. And it comes as we have in the middle of the Holy and Great Lent. We have the Feast of the Holy Cross. The same thing we have the Feast of the Mid-Pentecost in this beautiful 50 days that we are celebrating the resurrection, ascension, and the receiving of the Holy Spirit of God. So as you see in the gospel, the evangelist John is mentioning about the mid Pentecost, the mid of the feast. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. We just saw him on Sunday healing that poor man that was paralyzed for 38 years. And that happened to be a Saturday, and he healed him. So now, after he healed him, he went to the temple, and he started teaching in the temple. And here they are, all the Pharisees accusing him. And he is asking them, why are you seeking to kill me? And their answer was, you have a demon. So, see, they did not want to recognize their wickedness. Their jealousy, their envy, their hatred in his face. But it was for them easier to say you have a demon. So, but... He didn't even pay, pay attention to this. He's moving forward. And he's comparing this, his action of healing that poor man on the Sabbath day with the circumcision. Saying, you all believe in Moses and in his law. But yet, the law he had given to you does not belong to him. Who gave him the law? God the, the Lord, the creator of all things. So whatever Moses did, it did not come from him, but from God. And he is saying, so if you're respecting his law, but yet you are doing the circumcision on the Sabbath day, which you think that is okay. So if it's okay to do that, which is for the salvation of men. So isn't then okay to cure not only the body, but the soul also of a person that was suffering for 38 years? And while he was talking, the innocent people saying, isn't this the one that they are seeking to kill? Just a few minutes ago, they said, you have a demon when he said, told them that he, they wanted him to kill him. But the, the people saying, isn't this the one that they are seeking to kill? Here he are. He's talking openly. And no, no one is saying anything. So maybe they know something more. Maybe is this the Christ? The promised one. The Redeemer. But how can it be that we know him? We know where he comes from. 
but about Christ, we don't know. See, this is the tricky thing, because they think that they know him, because he was the son of Joseph, but they don't know the mystery about his birth. See, that's why never judge by appearance. We like to to divide people in groups, those that we like and those that we dislike, and those that we don't care about. Pretty much we divide people in three groups, right? And each, each one we are categorizing according to our own understanding, right? You look at the person and so you put him on your specific group that you have for, for that. Right? You have a group that you enjoy being around them, enjoy talking to them, and you have others that you're avoiding. And if you get face to face, you're trying to shorten it and escape, right? Because you, you don't want to be around that person. So the same thing pretty much happened here. So they didn't like Christ. They disliked him so much. They hated him. So, but according to the Mosaic law, every person after 30 could openly speak and have followers. So that was the part that they couldn't abstain because he's in how he knows letters. Because they knew exactly every person that attended the rabbinic school, right? So when this guy now is speaking and with these high theological words, so he says, we know him. So he never studied. So how come that he has this wisdom? The wisdom of God, because he's the son of God. And he's this is what he's pointing today in this gospel. The teaching that I'm teaching is not mine, but of the one that had sent me. So the prophecies that were talking about him and you, he's addressing to them, the teachers of the law, the Pharisees, the rabbis. You that have the law and you know you're reading of them, don't you see that? Don't you understand that? Because they never saw, they were amazed. We never saw anything like this, right? So, and seeing all of this, they yet are remaining blind. They cannot see the light through the lines of the books, through the lines of the letters, because they are seeing the letters, but they are not seeing the meaning of those letters. And that's why they are remaining blind and could not distinct the truth. And that's why he is telling us, do not judge for, by appearance. Because many times you can see people, how they are dressed, and uh, you don't like their, their clothes, and you don't like the person because of that. Or you don't like uh, their haircut or their beard, and you don't, like, <laughs> you don't like the person because of their appearance, right? But it's not about that. We have to look deep in the heart. Because the appearance doesn't really say much. We have to learn to see people and to see the true values in them. Doesn't matter how they look. Remember that we, we had the week before about Saint Christophorus, right? He was very ugly. They named him Dog Face. And in some icons, he's represented a man with a dog face. So, but it doesn't really ma matter uh, the appearance. All the, his friends and soldiers of the Roman Empire was making fun of him, but he became a saint. See, in God's eyes, what matters is our works, our heart, our deeds. This is what matters. This is what we cannot understand, and this is what the Pharisees could not understand and could not see in the face of the Lord. And even the disciples themselves, you see, if, if they would at first understand and realize, 
they wouldn't ask him for positions. They wouldn't flee that night, but they would stand by, right? But be, exact, and when the woman told them that he's risen, they wouldn't abstain and think what, what they are talking about, right? Because, but only when they received the Holy Spirit, only then their eyes was open. But you see, my dear ones, we are baptized in the name of the Holy Trinity. So we received already the Holy Spirit. The one that Jesus was talking about, whoever will drink from this water will never thirst. So he was talking about the, Spirit, the Holy Spirit. If you receive the Holy Spirit, you will receive the knowledge, the divine knowledge. So the, the divine wisdom, Sophia, the divine wisdom. This is what so the true Sophia of God is, the true wisdom of God is. And this is what they could not understand, the wisdom of God. And this is what we are celebrating today, the wisdom of God, the one that they could not distinguish where it is from. He didn't study. He didn't go to school. Where is this wisdom coming from? Is the divine wisdom because he is the son of God. He is the word of God, the creator of all things visible and invisible. Who, well, why should one that established everything and created everything, would he be in need of human teaching? Of course not. Because he gave us the teaching. He gave us the wisdom. What could we give to him if he is the creator of all? This is what they could not see and understand. And this is what we should open wide our eyes and understand it. And be respectful to the word of God. And not entering in the church as strangers. But entering in the church as permanent uh, members of the church. Because we are adopted by the grace of God through his sacrifice and through the holy baptism. So many times you see Orthodox people baptized in the name of the Holy Trinity and they are entering the church and they, they are looking around they're like, like in, uh, lost in the space. This is your home. This is where you belong to. This is your brothers and sisters. This is your friends. Why you, you look strange? Why you feel that you're a stranger? Because you are dividing your, yourself from this. Because you're not doing your part. You, you estrange to yourself from this. And when you enter the church, you don't know what to do. You don't feel comfortable. You don't know how to greet God, his mother, and the saints. But we have to learn these things because this is God's wisdom, again. And the, this is, again, what we are trying to do here in this school to give you this, the taste of the knowledge of the wisdom of God, to absorb it, to, to grow up with it, to become part of this, to become friends of God, brothers and sisters, to be one with him because this is the point, this is the reason of his sacrifice to unite us all through the cross, through the receiving of the Holy Spirit through the baptism. Because once we are baptized in the name of the Holy Trinity, in the same water, we are becoming brothers and sisters. We're not longer strangers to each other, and we're not longer stranger to the saints, but we are one. We are relatives through the baptism. And that's, what, that's why 
the apostle said in the New Testament there there is no stranger there is no slave there is no free there is no nas nations we are all one in Christ brothers and sisters and this is how it shall be always we have to be always loving and united not categorizing and dividing people in groups oh I like these ones I don't like those ones no because everyone is the image of Christ so if you dislike someone you dislike God himself and we have to work with ourselves because we are far from being perfect but when we do something you know what we're trying we're trying to excuse ourselves you know well because of the circumstances you know and we're trying to find out to find a way you know to make it easy for us and even uh, asking God to have pity on us but if we see the others and we're condemning them no 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 <laughs> but let's apply the same judgment for ourselves first if you will do that what you're doing to others to yourself you'll see that it's not that funny so let us try my dear ones to apply those would you hate yourself no so if you love yourself then you have to love others if you love others you will love God so let us love one another that with one mind we may confess Father, Son and Holy Spirit Amen God bless you all Christ is risen